How would you like to hit amazing forehands? Well, in today's video, we're gonna give you five steps that are gonna help you get clear on what to focus on when you're on the court so that you can get better. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, one of the leading online tennis instruction websites in the world. We wanna keep expanding our reach, so it would really help us if you shared this video, if you enjoyed it, if you give us a thumbs up, YouTube likes that, and make sure, again, you're subscribed to the channel and your notifications are turned on. We are here to help you get better. Let's start with the forehand. Step number one, we gotta talk about the grip and the ready position. Now with the grip, the semi-western grip is the grip that I prefer. It looks something like this. You can also use more of an eastern grip, a la Roger Federer. I'm not crazy about the western grip. I think there are limitations here for a number of reasons we're not gonna go into today, but I like that semi-western grip. You can find it by just dropping the racket like this and picking it up. Now, make sure that your trigger finger, your index finger is spread and that your, your racket is angled on the racket. I see too many people holding the racket like this. That's a no-no, you're not gonna feel the ball in your hand. So you're gonna have that index finger spread like this. We're in the semi-western. Now, when we're preparing in our ready position, there are players that start like this, okay? I prefer to have the racket angled like this, a little more a la Rafa Nadal. Uh, because I feel like a player can make a great first move from this position. If they're here, now they have to turn the hand. It's not wrong, but I just think it's more efficient. Now, this may impact your backhand, so you have to weigh the options there. But I like to start with the racket tip slightly up and angled like this, and I can just make a first move to this position here. Okay? So, we've got the grip in the ready position. Now we do talk about the first move. I really like the arms to go up together like this, and you can have the, this off arm come off early if you're late on your forehand. A lot of players, they try to emulate the pros and they keep the racket here too long and then they're late. So you might have to separate early, but we don't wanna separate where the hand goes down or goes like this. I don't really like the, the alligator dinosaur T-Rex arms. I like a big off arm pulling across the body. That's going to create the shoulder turn, okay? That's the first move. Now we get into the backswing. The biggest thing that I want you to focus on is trying to get that elbow away from the body when you make the first move. Because a lot of players, they keep the elbow in and then they drop the racket back like this. And you're not going to be able to create that lag or to have that, the butt of the racket uh, leading and the hand leading like this. If you have your elbow in, it's gonna look more like this. So we've gotta get the elbow away from the body with this first move right here. Okay, elbow away and then the big thing with the lag or with the racket getting into this position is you have to have flexibility in the wrist. I see a lot of online instructors teaching this, but many players can't even get into this position. So you're trying to get here, but you don't have the range of motion in the wrist. So you, you need to make sure you get the elbow away with this backswing. And when you get down into this position, it's only going to look like this if you have the range of motion and if you have the grip. If you have an Eastern grip or a continental grip, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, the final thing that's going to help you create this is relaxation. If you're gripping the racket too tight, you're not gonna be able to get the racket to look anything like this. So relaxation is important. You see, I'm barely even touching the racket and I'm able to have the racket just drop down in this position. Tension will make it look like this. So we really have to focus on making sure that racket or that hand is relaxed on the racket and you have the right grip. Now let's talk about the contact point. Roger Federer, Rafa et al., when they make contact, it looks like their arm is almost completely straight. That's a very difficult forehand to master, to have the arm completely straight. I like to have the arm be natural and relaxed and have a bend in the arm. There's a lot of great forehands that have a bend in the arm. Listen, if your arm is straight and you're ripping it like Federer and Nadal, you can do it all day long. But I find that when people try to copy those forehands and try to go straight, there's too much tension. Again, relaxation is the, is the master key to success on the forehand and all strokes for that matter. So when we make contact, you wanna have a bend in the elbow. You just wanna make sure you're not, your elbow is not tucked into the body and too close. How do we fix that? We create that space with the elbow in the beginning so that the elbow stays away from the body with that slight bend. So that's what's gonna really help your contact point. Now, in terms of how far out in front to hit the ball, I actually think the contact point gets fixed with the next step, which is the finish. So with a finish, I like the traditional finish to be over the shoulder, okay? Older, over the shoulder with the finish like this, you can go to this shoulder here if you want, but I find that when people do that, 
they end up coming down and hitting uh, too much, especially when they're nervous and hitting down in the net. So I like the foundation to be where the racket goes up over the shoulder. And if you really create a lot of space and even catch the racket out here first before you bring it back, that's when your contact point is going to be absolutely perfect. And when you aim to the right spot, if you aim cross court, and you're, if you've been laid on your forehand, you'll get the right contact. So don't really pay attention to how much, how far out in front or how late you hit the forehand. Focus on having a great finish and great aim and you'll find that your contact point will really clean up. Okay, those are my five steps to the forehand. Let me give you a quick, quick demo right here. I'll just drop the ball and I want you to notice, here's my ready position with my grip. I want you to notice my first move. Here's my first move, okay? Now, notice how I create that space with the elbow. And then I want you to notice my follow through and my finish. So here's my space and here's my finish. And see how I go out and around and I extend and then I come back over the shoulder. That is your five step formula. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please share it with others. Give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, ask any questions below. We are here to help. And make sure, again, you're subscribed to the channel and your notifications are turned on. Before you go, I've got a free gift for you. It's a free course that includes more lessons on the forehand, the serve, footwork, and strategy. It's inside our Tennis Evolution app. You can register for it by clicking the link in the description below or somewhere in this video. We want to help you get to the next level. Pick up that free course inside the Tennis Evolution app. You are going to have literally a coach in your pocket, and that's what we want for you. Thanks for your time today.